today's a big day. Today's gonna be our first pour for our concrete. And the weather is being a little snooty, so we're hoping that by the time we're ready to pour, clouds will break. We have just a little bit of a rainstorm. It's way down there. But we're hoping that's gonna pass. So, first shows up will be the pump truck. Big apparatus. Big arm that comes out and be able to put the concrete actually in the forms. And then the concrete trucks will follow after that. So, right now they're doing all the last minute pieces and parts for the bracing of the concrete. The concrete's very heavy and um, can cause a lot of pressure, especially when you have the drop of it coming down landing down here filling up and starting to pile up so inside here it's all the bracing for this to keep everything nice and straight we'll walk around here a little bit and let you guys take a peek of what's going on so we'll peek in the window down here look at this spider web there you go you can see the LVLs there that's what the floor joist is going to hook on right there into the floor joist we'll hook onto those pieces there you can see all the different bracing you have the horizontal bracing here you have the vertical bracing here and then you have the triangle piece that comes down here now what's so neat is if i can zoom up on these for you is that these are adjustable Right in there, those are adjustable. And so what we can do is once we start pouring this concrete and if this wall, you look down it, see how perfectly straight it is. If that wall, the concrete, if it gives any push or pressure, as it's setting up, what they can actually do is they'll go back and keep watching this as it goes around and goes around. And they can adjust those and they can push that wall and pull that wall. It's actually easier to push it out than to actually, you know, pull. So what they'll do is they might set it just maybe an inch inside, right, where the wall actually leans in just a little bit. So when the concrete comes down and it kind of gives all that pressure in there, then it's easier to do it that way. But, uh, oh, I'm so excited and nervous. There's so much going on here. But uh, I'll show you like down here at the, this opening. So right here, they left this little section open so that makes sure that the uh, concrete will be down in this footer down inside here. And then once it starts to fill up and they can plug it just to make sure they got concrete in all the pieces. Here's a big piece right here because there's a wall, it's a T. Wall comes in on that. And so they just make sure that it doesn't want to push it out right there separate we have extra bracing there but the nice thing is is all this comes off once it sets up so we can see all the all the openings here have the caps on them and then they have this bracing and then they have a brace that goes in between them and uh, so the mail lady stopped and couldn't get through and I said well, don't worry about it I'll just take them so I have them separated and I'll stick them in the mailbox so she thought that was pretty nice so Waste of waiting on our concrete should be here in about five minutes. So I thought I'd run down here and deliver some mail. Make, make sure I keep all my neighbors happy since I've blocked their road for the next couple hours. Yep, there he is. So we'll go up and uh, I'll show you guys how a pump truck works. Uh, pump trucks inherently are very easy if you understand how they work so if you can think about underneath here there's a this is all a big huge pump and so the concrete will drop in right here and go in down in here there's a big ram and it pushes it it'll come out of here go into that tubing and then of course the, all this tubing then comes out like a gigantic you can think out of a big like a gigantic arm down the bottom or here and you can just move it around and you just got a remote control that can move it around and turn the pump on and turn the pump off
Highline wires are above us, and so the pump operator, his name is John, scooted the truck to the left and got up close to this way so that the arm can then swing away from it. I'll move out here a little bit into the street to get you a little bit better view of it so as not to swing the pump truck, the arm, anywhere close to the power lines. I gotta scoot way back here because this apparatus is so big. Well, it's almost showtime. The concrete has arrived. Alright. The uh, the rep for the concrete company is actually here on site because this is a it's a special pour. It's a neat setup. Everyone seems to be pretty excited about it. So here, this is the way it works. Concrete will arrive in this in these trucks. He'll dump it into the hopper right there. The hopper will then have the the pump that pressures it up to pump it into the tube and all the way out to the chute out there. They're running the concrete mix. And the reason they're running it right now is they put this special additive in the concrete that once it cures out, it is going to be waterproof. Water migrates through the, the, the foam and touches the concrete. It seals it up. And so more water touches it after it's set up, it makes it even more impervious. I had never heard of this stuff, but that is why I hired David. The man knows everything about how to be more efficient and how to be a better product. Because I can tell you this, when you waterproof on the outside of this, I can't tell you how many times in different places I've been where you just don't get it perfect and it will seep in. And some people have musty smelling basements and there's a moisture problem in your basement and that is the reason is that you're having the water migrate its way through the concrete because concrete is pervious moisture will seep through it okay i'm here with the uh concrete truck operator what's your name my name's joe joe so joe tell us what your job is for this for this part my job is to fill this hopper here with concrete and not let it overflow, basically. Excellent. So that sound that we hear is the actual pump. Yeah, I'll put it in. 5,000 PSI to the end to the end of the drum. Right. Oh my God, 5,000 PSI. That's what it takes to get the concrete up there, down that, and all the way over there. I tell you, it's invaluable to have these guys. Now, this is their wheelhouse. They are the expert in it, and they know exactly how to do this. They can talk to each other. So down here, John, the operator, will have his remote, and he'll give a he'll honk the horn when he's done with his pump, so that he doesn't continue to pump uh, concrete into that hopper. On the inside, they're still making sure. Gentlemen are coming behind him. We'll go around so you can see where the actual concrete has come in. And they're going to start at the bottom, of course, and work their way around. Now, you remember me talking to you about the bag, which is the footer, right? So, let's take a look. So, down here, there it is. It's in there. And you can see how it started to fill up right in there. We are slowly making our way around down low. They started uh, mostly in the corners and uh, start filling up the foundation parts and then they just keep working themselves around and around and uh, before you know what we'll be done with our first load of concrete. The next load that showed up, he's right there ready to stay. He's just off to the side. So this guy, when he's done, he'll pull out, and the other guy will pull in, and we'll just keep continuing so that we don't have any sort of a cold joint that might want to set up. 
today's a really good day to be pouring. Temperature is probably, oh, mid 50s, maybe 60, high humidity. So we don't have to worry about the concrete wanting to set up or excessive evaporation or anything like that. So let's walk down here while they're over there so I'm not in the way. You can start to see the footer, which is right here, which is poured at the same time. So that one's done, and that one's done. And once they get all the corners done, like those inside corners are done, they'll come back and they'll start running that. And, uh, and then it'll really, once they get that, then they can start going around even faster and faster once they get all the corners in. So now that they have poured a little bit down here, he's going to come back and get these knockouts. And this is for the ridge beam that will attach on the back side for our deck to come out so that can move way up there. So we'll attach it down there, and then we'll have columns that will come off the floor down here. So what we do is he'll cut circles there. You see, that's where the ridge beam is going to be for our upper deck. Now the lower deck, which will be down here, will be a little easier to attach. It's a little bit lower. They can countersink it and it's not near as important as way up there. I'm here with David with ICF Walls. And David, why don't you go through with us, or for us, um, the kind of concrete that we put in for the footing and the, your first couple of pours here. But because we do a mono pour, we have to use two different mixes of concrete. And on our footing, we need it to set up really quick. And so we do a 4,000 PSI concrete, which is actually way more than what's required in an ICF. Okay. We don't put any fly ash in it. Okay. That makes it set up a little faster. That's right. <clears throat> we do it in a three inch slump, which is a real dry mix. But then we add plasticizer to it, okay. which makes it run more because we've got to go down from the top of the wall all the way to the bottom. Okay. We've got to fill up the bag down, and down it, here at the bottom. Right. And so if it was if it was real thick, it wouldn't flow. It wouldn't run underneath the windows and the doors, and it wouldn't fill up the bag like it's supposed to. Okay. And so we put the plasticizer in it, and it actually makes that three-inch slump act like a six-inch slump. Okay. For 45 minutes. Okay. And we also put calcium in it. And the calcium makes it set up faster. So we've got all these all these things working together in tandem and against each other. Right. So that we can make that footing set up fast enough so that then we can pour the rest of the wall. Okay. So we just finished the second truck that had the uh, footing mix in it. And now we're starting on the wall mix. And the difference between the footing and the wall mix is that... We don't use plasticizer in the walls. We don't use calcium in the walls on a day like today. Um, we do put fly ash in it so that it will flow a little bit better, but it's still a half inch aggregate, six inch slump this time. Okay. It's about the consistency of cake batter <laughs> being pumped in that giant pump. <laughs> well, and the guy was telling me, like, they pump it like a 5,000 PSI to get it up in the tube right. and drop it all the way down. Right. I, it's, this is. It's amazing to watch. I mean, it's just a feat of engineering to me in that you guys can unload a concrete truck in about 15 minutes. At the speed that, that he pumps it, yes. But we're pumping, if there's 10 speeds on that pump, yeah. we're pumping at about one or two. Oh my God. So they, they can, can really unload it. They back. can put two trucks at one time, pump the trucks as fast as they can into the pump truck, and he can, he can stay ahead of them. <laughs> It's really amazing. I wouldn't want to be on the other side of it. Yeah, I, <laughs> no kidding. Well, um, my hat is off to you today because this is just a feat of engineering, like I said a while ago, of how you guys, in 35 hours, build all of this. And then on the fifth day, you're ready to pour. I mean, it's just amazing to watch. So my hat's off to you, man. This well, is I, impressive. ICF has come a long ways over the last... 10, 15 years. Um, not very many manufacturers in the market right now, and uh, 
they've done a really good job in their engineering and making sure that we don't have blowouts, making sure that they stay together, yeah. corners stay straight. But that's so. what I was I was watching, like looking right down the wall mm -hmm. when he was coming around the corner, and it doesn't move. Like even with that being pushed in there, it I mean that stuff doesn't move at all. It's fascinating. A lot of that is the bracing system that we use because it has it has vertical bracing and this is what's different with the bracing that we use. It has vertical bracing, but it also has horizontal bracing. I noticed that, and they were, and in some of the places, they're actually able to stand on it, almost like right. a chair or, right. a, or, or like a catwalk mm -hmm. kind of to walk mm -hmm. on. And then it also holds, um, it holds the scaffold system, so it, it performs many purposes. It works, and it's working flawlessly. Today. And the main, main thing is, though, is keeping the walls straight square. Yeah. Well, well and now a concrete pour was scheduled for three hours. And we hit three hours and six minutes. So if that's any testimony of what these guys are capable of doing. Um, the pump guy that works in tandem there with David, they've worked on many jobs together. And uh, he was telling me that they have sampled different mixes and everything and have it dialed in pretty good. And uh, looks like I'm fortunate to be the benefactor of, of uh, really good craftsmanship. So. What we have now is a house that is poured.